Welcome back to a walk through Acts with Pastor Kyle. Today we're going to be looking in Acts chapter 12. I hope you're reading ahead and kind of know what's happening. Uh, it'll make this make a lot more sense to you. So welcome back and let's dive into chapter 12. Now what we're seeing here in chapter 12 is the, the Christian church in Jerusalem is now facing more intense persecution. We're going to see the king, Herod, kind of join into the persecution now. So not only are they being persecuted by uh, the Jewish religious leaders, but now the, the government, per se, is, is beginning the persecution. And Herod is going to have James, uh, the brother of John, one of the original disciples, arrested as well as Peter. James is going to immediately be executed, but Peter is going to be placed in prison. And Herod knows the power of God, I think, because he's going to surround him with guards and levels of guards and, and different gates to get in and out. So he thinks he's got Peter locked down. And there's two things in this chapter that we're going to focus on. So we're really going to look at two verses today. All right, Our first one is uh, chapter 12, verse 5, and it says, So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was praying fervently to God for him. And then it, in chapter 12, verse 24, we're going to see, but the word of God flourished and multiplied. So let's look at those two verses. I think they're directly tied together. Uh, when Peter is arrested, the, the, the only course of action that the members of the church have is to pray. And they began to pray. The scripture says to pray for Peter. All right, they're going to pray for Peter to God. So they they're asking God for a miracle. God, you know, James has been executed. They know Peter is going to be next. And so they're praying for a miracle from God. And this miracle occurs. An angel's going to show up. He's going to unlock all the locks. The guards aren't going to see anything that's happening. And Peter's going to be able to return back to a house where some of the church members have been praying. So the church prays for a miracle and it happens. But then we jump into that verse uh, 24, which we kind of see at the end of the chapter. And it's really exciting because it, as this persecution intensifies, God's not thwarted. All right. God isn't, he, you know, he's not being stopped by what men are doing on earth because, well, he's God and his accomplish, his purposes are going to be accomplished as we talked about yesterday. And what we're going to see is that the church flourishes and multiplies. And I think this is fantastic. The Greek word here uh, that they that they use for flourish means to grow, to become greater, or to develop deep roots. And I think what we're seeing is all of those things are happening to the church during this time of persecution. It's growing. <clears throat> it's becoming even greater. It's becoming more solid. All right. And then it's developing deep roots. And I, I just, I find this to be fascinating because we look around and, and we see things that are happening around us. And, and we oftentimes say, you know, what is God trying to accomplish through this? And I have to be honest, I think John, the writer of, uh, of the book of John, the writer of, of Revelation, is he's got to be wondering. His brother dies. Peter lives. What is God doing? But when he looks around and he sees the church growing, he sees God moving then you know, I feel like there's there's some peace that comes to him in this. So how does this happen? What does this mean for us? What's our application today? You know what? Here's the deal. This is still happening. The church is being persecuted. All right, the church is being persecuted around the world, and I don't mean uh, somebody says something negative about the church. I mean people being arrested. I mean church buildings closed. I mean church leaders being taken to prison. Church leaders disappearing. All right, the church is truly being persecuted around the world. There, there are places in the world where to profess Christ means you're going to lose your head, and so. What is the church doing in this persecution? These places where it's being persecuted. First, they're praying. Christians around the world are praying and the church is growing. You know, we get in our bubble here in the United States and we don't see the persecution that's happening. We don't see that God's moving around the world. And my prayer for you today is that your eyes will be open to how God is on the move around the world. There are places where Christ, where Christ is being persecuted, where the, the Christian church is being persecuted, and they're seeing explosive growth. Places like Iran and China and Russia and Turkey and North Korea. God is moving in those places. Christians are being strengthened in their faith through prayer, some of them losing their lives, but the church is flourishing. It's growing deep roots, 
It's expanding. It's influencing the culture around it. And that is what we want to do. We want to be in prayer for those people. So what is our response today? You know, we want to pray for the persecuted church today. We want to respond. We want to, to let them know um, through through the Holy Spirit that, that around the world they're being prayed for. So let's respond in prayer for the nations today. Lord, we give you thanks that you are a God that cannot be stopped by men's plans. You are a God that has had a plan from the creation of the earth until you decide to come back and, and bring your kingdom uh, here in its fullness. Lord, you have had a plan and God, persecution will not stop your church from growing. Lord, we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world in places like Iran, in places like Russia, in places like China, in places like North Korea. God, where we know the persecution is intense, where leaders are being arrested, where churches are being closed, where Bibles are being confiscated, Lord. We know these things are happening, yet, Lord, you are on the move there. And God, we want to pray for those brothers and sisters. We want to lift them up. We want to pray that you strengthen them. We want to pray that your spirit is moving in them. Lord, and we want to pray for those governments that they will see that they cannot stop you, Lord, and that they, those government leaders, will fall to their knees and recognize that you are God. We have seen it in Scripture. We have seen you do that to powerful leaders before, Lord, and God, we want to see that again. We pray that. We pray for peace and comfort for those that are in persecution right now, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, come back tomorrow. We're going to look at chapter 13, continue in our walk in Acts, and tonight, uh, before you go to bed, say a prayer for those persecuted Christians. Lift them up. Have God strengthen them. And may his church continue to flourish. All right, we'll see you tomorrow.